and what you're looking at right now is a floor plan of the MRI facility. And to the left center um, on this floor plan is the MRI scanner room. Immediately to the right of the scanner room is the control room where the technologist normally administers the exam. Below the MRI scanner room and the control room is a corridor that runs left to right on the plan and below that is an alcove, a preparation area, directly opposite from the door to the MRI scanner room. These are some of the key areas that we're going to look at as the sequence of events unfolds. In addition to the areas, we need to know who the players are. The yellow square represents the anesthesiologist, who for the moment we're putting in the MRI scanner room. The blue star represents the boy, Michael Colombini, the patient um, in this particular accident. The purple rounded squares uh, represent the technologist. The one kind of lower down into the left is the technologist at the console who was to run the exam. And the one above and to the right is the technologist who was working on post-processing for an earlier study from that day. So the boy is brought from the patient rooms uh, down to the preparation area where the anesthesiologist sedates him initially, and he is then moved into the MRI scanner. The boy is still agitated. He gets another dose of sedative. Uh, the anesthesiologist sets him up with a uh, cannula to deliver supplemental oxygen and a pulse oximeter. Before the exam can commence, the anesthesiologist notes that the boy's pulse ox is dropping. So he goes to increase the flow rate of the oxygen going to the cannula. He goes to the wall outlet and he starts adjusting the valve on the regulator and notices that no oxygen is flowing from the regulator whatsoever. He's alarmed by this because the boy's pulse ox is dropping. So he goes, taps on the window to the control room, goes to the door after motioning to the tech to come and meet him. The tech comes around and asks, what can I do for you? The anesthesiologist is very upset that his patient's oxygen saturation levels are dropping and he needs oxygen for this boy. And in no uncertain terms, the anesthesiologist tells the tech, go fix it. The tech, who this tech was unfamiliar with the oxygen supply system, goes to the other tech and says, we need to fix this. The other tech says, well, if you don't know, this is the perfect opportunity for me to show you. Let's do it together. So the two of them enter the MRI equipment room, which with its fans and pumps and all of the stuff making noise, <clears throat> as soon as they step in, they are acoustically separated from everything else that occurs in the facility. They have no idea what's going on. They can't hear the anesthesiologist, our yellow square, hollering for them to get the oxygen turned on that his patient is crashing. He needs oxygen. Well, it just so happens that while the techs are in the equipment room and the anesthesiologist is yelling, a nurse who was returning to the MR department from a prior study, and she had left something in the area, she was coming back to retrieve it, she lets herself into the department, and here's the anesthesiologist calling for supplemental oxygen. Like any professional compassionate nurse, she goes to see what she can do to help. She goes to the anesthesia prep bay and notices three portable oxygen cylinders. Well, Mr. Anesthesiologist, if you need oxygen, I have tanks right here. Here, have one. The anesthesiologist turns around, takes one step closer into the room, and the incredible attractive force of the magnetism from the MRI scanner pulls the tank out of his hand and it goes flying into the bore, the tunnel of the MRI scanner, where it strikes the boy, pummels him in his face and head. Remember, this boy just had surgery to remove a brain tumor. His skull was cracked a couple of days prior and he gets struck in the head repeatedly by this oxygen tank as it oscillates back and forth before coming to rest in the magnetic field. Well, the anesthesiologist and the nurse, they call the code team. While the code team is coming, the anesthesiologist pulls the boy out of the magnet. Um, they assess the extent of his injuries, and it's clear immediately that it's more than they want to try and do uh, to stabilize him in the MRI department. They want to get him to the ED just as quick as possible. 
And while all of this is transpiring, the two technologists come out of the equipment room to say, we fixed the oxygen. And one of the first things they see is the anesthesiologist covered in the boy's blood from removing him from the MRI scan. The efforts of the tech turned out to be too little, too late.